Welcome back. I hope you had a little bit of a break there as we move into this next topic in chemistry calculations. Now, we're going to be teaching you in pre-AP chemistry a mathematical technique called dimensional analysis or DA. Now, this is a case where it is the process that is critical. We're after learning a problem solving technique. And yes, I care about the final answer. It will be worth some you know, credit, but by and large, what is going to be the most valuable component is learning this process. Because of that, you're going to find out that there are pretty much only two ways that you can set these up. And remember, all work leading up to the final answer must be shown. So you will need to use one of these two methods in order to get any credit on these questions. Now, to help you understand the idea of what we're doing, I, I put up a, a simple mathematical multiplication of fractions. Now, if you were to approach this, most of you would, or I hope, simplify this, especially if you didn't have a calculator available, simplify it by canceling those twos. Because when you have the same value in both the numerator and the denominator, those values cancel. We can simplify this fraction to be 3 fourths. Well, we find, and you're going to find, that we can cancel units the same way. So if we have the same unit in the numerator and the denominator, that unit will cancel. So if we have, for example, a, a unit in a numerator and we want it to cancel, we're going to put a factor that has the same unit in that denominator. Likewise, if we wanted to get rid of seconds and maybe convert onto minutes, we're going to find that we'll put that value in the numerator. So we're going to put them opposite one another. We're going to start with dealing with the unit in the numerator. And let's do a time factor because I think you will uh, capture that pretty easily. And let me show you the two ways we can do this. So. I think it helps a lot of times. This is a one step, so it's not too bad. But if you will write the actual question as an equality, because we're going to find when it's multi-step that you always want to start after that question mark. So if you will write that sentence in a more mathematical term, that will help. And again, remember we're considering exact um, conversion factors as exact numbers. And again, it's not true, but um, we're going to just work with that at this level. Now, the first way to do this is to set this up. We've got a, a th 3, not a 2. Mind ahead of my, my hand there. So I've got my value. You want to include units along the way. It's kind of like a map, and this is the street that you're on. If you don't include the units, you're much more likely to get lost. It'd be like giving directions where they say, go three blocks, turn right, go five blocks, turn left, go another 0.4 miles, and take the fork. It, it's a lot more difficult if there's not streets, names there to kind of give you a starting place. And that's what we want to do is include the units. Now, I want to get this to minutes. What that means is that I need to eliminate my hours. I need to multiply by a conversion factor that's going to eliminate hours in this. So if hours are in the numerator, as they are here, to get them to cancel, I'm going to put hours in the denominator. I want to go to minutes. It is a one-step conversion. And so I'm going to simply multiply by that conversion factor there. I like to put my units in first and then think about the conversion factors afterwards. It'll help you make sure you don't flip-flop those. And there are 60 minutes for every one hour. And if I do that math, I am going to get um, 190.5. Seven minutes, and I rounded that to six 
or to four figs, sig figs, because that was four sig figs. So I want my final answer to reflect those four sig figs. Now, what I like about this method of setting it up is because you have the times, you can enter the parentheses, you can then enter the divided and enter the number on the bottom and put in the parentheses. You can enter it exactly as written into your calculator. So the math steps, your actual calculator steps are, are clear on this. Now, and, and that will be fine. You can use this all the time if you want. That's one of the process methods that we will allow you to do. The other one I like because it gives you a little bit more space. It, it squeezes the values together. And that's especially good because we're going to ultimately find that we're going to do five, six, seven plus steps. Now this is one step, so I'm going to make a grid for one step. And I'm going to put my original up here, 3.179 hours. There's nothing underneath it. It's, it's not a double unit. So I don't have to put anything here right now. Now I want to get rid of my hours, so I'm going to put them in the opposite place. The top of the grid represents the numerator. The bottom represents a denominator of a series of fractions. I want my minutes on top. You always, always, always want to cancel those. So you know for sure you didn't flip-flop your conversion factor. And again, I have the same 60 minutes per one hour. And if I write that out, I get 190.7. Don't forget your units and sig figs in your final answer. Now, I like this because it takes a little bit less space, but it's not quite as obvious how you're going to do this. What we'll do mathematically is you're going to multiply by everything in the top, and you're going to divide if it's everything in the bottom. Now, when you divide, you've got to be very, very careful. You can multiply a whole string of numbers and not worry about it. But when you divide, you either have to use parentheses or hit your equal sign every time you divide by a number. Now, in this case, we're dividing by 1, so it's not as important. But later on, we're going to have non one zero numbers down there. And either hit equals every time you divide, or put in a parentheses, do the multiplication, close your parentheses. And we'll work on that in class and make sure you're uh, understanding that mathematical process there. So that's our setup. Let me go on and do one more quick one. It'll be a little longer video, but probably not more than 10 minutes. Got some funky units here. And what I want you to realize is anytime I have an equality, I've got a conversion factor. So in this case, it's asking me, the first one is going to be asking me a question about molecules and moles. So it says, how many molecules are equal to 3.2 moles? So I'm going to look for a conversion factor on that chart. You don't even know what a mole is, but as long as you've got a conversion factor, we can convert. And this is implied. It's better in your notes. This is the only one that has a mole. And this 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is anything, just like a dozen represents anything. So we're going to start with our 3.2 moles. It's only one step. I'm going to go ahead and do the clear mathematics in this one. I want moles to cancel. I want molecules in my numerator. My moles cancel. If you go back to your conversion, you see that there's a 1 in front of the mole. So I'm going to put the 1 in front of the mole. Even though I, you might not know what a mole is right now, you can go through the mathematical mechanics of it. That should have been a lot clearer that that could be molecules, but I'm talking to you about it right now. So I'm going to put that number in top, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, the day is going to come when you're going to understand scientifically what this is. Right now, I want you to understand 
mathematically what it is. I'm going to report my final value to um, two sig figs. So we want two sig figs in that final value. So I get 1.9 times 10 to the 24th molecules. Now, I want you to be writing this down. And if on your calculator you did not get the correct value up here, I want you to write down your question. Note it in your, um, the notes that you're taking. Put a star by it, highlight it, whatever you need to do so that you can ask me that question at the beginning of our next class. Now, let's stop here and we'll move on to some more examples as we go uh, through your notes.